and welcome to Asia Media. I'm Stella Kim. Today we're here in Morley Field at Balboa Park interviewing a highly acclaimed musician of traditional Indian music. Rajashri Mukherjee has traveled throughout the world and given performances in places such as Kenya, India, Tanzania, and even here in the United States. Rajashri Mukherjee is an honors graduate in zoology from Lady Brabourne College, a reputed college for girls in Kolkata, India, and she moved to Kenya in 1990 and founded the Masharda School of Music. A highly popular singer, Rajasri Mukherjee, is also a practitioner of musical therapy, which has been found to be beneficial for alleviating health ailments and benefiting holistic well-being. Who I am, that's the mystery I would like to find out myself. Professionally, I had been a singer, writer, composer, a producer, a lyricist, music therapist. But that's just professionally. Mm -hmm. I am born in India. I'm a resident of Africa for the last 19 years. I visit USA every year. I am married for 29 years with two kids. But these, all these only say basically what I am, but not who I am. So I'm still find, trying to find out who I am. OK, thank you. Well, I understand you're a very uh, professional musical musician. Um, how did you get started in a musical career? I would like to say I didn't start, uh, like I, w I would like to say when I started very young that I learned music from my mother. I started music even when I didn't know what music was. Wow. And it was, I think it was even less, I was less than two years when I started. Mm -hmm. And uh, then from age of 10, I was put in a music school. I learned music from a reputed uh, music teacher and a singer. Then when I was 13, I was put in a music school. From there, I get, got my diploma when I was 18. Mm -hmm. And at the age of 18, I also got uh, my music, first music degree wow. from another institute in Allahabad. And uh, later, I went on to do my second music degree. Like, it, it was there, like... It just started off like that, you know. Wow. It was natural. It was nothing that you planned to do or something. Mm -hmm. I don't even remember just thinking of doing music. It's just, it's so natural. It because, just came. It just because I can't say that I was like forced to because if I started learning music before two, mm -hmm. it grows with you. Mm -hmm. So you, it is very natural. It's something it didn't start later, or I made it an effort, made an effort to do something. It was very natural. Wow. Do you have any uh, musical in influences or inspirations? Musical influences, uh, I would say when I joined my music, uh, second music school at the age of 13, mm -hmm. I used to notice my guru, we call guru, who is the teacher, we call guru. I used to notice Srimati Suchitra Mitra mm -hmm. very intensely, minutely, because the way she conducted the classes, mm -hmm corrected each and every details, any mistake any, would, any student would make, the, all the details, her change, like she would change from one mood to the other mood mm -hmm. of a song or one style to another with, like effortlessly, like with, at, she was at ease. Mm. And uh, mainly I was very much in awe of her like in an exhaustible energy level. Mm -hmm. She was always like full of energy and I used to notice everything in detail. So she, like she was my everything like later as a teacher whatever I did I think I got it from her because wow. it came naturally to me mm -hmm. because I was very keen in uh, just following whatever she did and also I think I'm an eternal learner. Mm -hmm. I want to know a lot of things from life around life I can learn from anyone, from every place, mm -hmm. and wherever I see something nice, good, and I want to just take it, mm -hmm. adapt it, and I have seen how music and sound really like has some effect, you know, mm -hmm. so like, so those are the things, you know, like uh, influences there, so how you talk, how you act, everything around, mm -hmm. yeah. so you, we learn from everything, and I think I I've learned from everything around me. Do you think music has influenced your life incredibly? I think my life is just music and without music I'll just die. 
<laughs> That's amazing. Well, I understand you're a musical therapist, so what do you do as a musical therapist? Musical therapist, uh, yeah, it's a very nice term. But I think I would like to say, uh, as a person, like, I can just connect one person to the universal energy field and even within every like every individual they have an energy source i can just mm -hmm. connect that the therapist becomes too rigid you know like you treat somebody i don't treat anybody you know yeah. i just connect their energy source to the outside like universal energy source so it's therapist is a very strong word <laughs> but it's it's nice to know like it's a nice word and I feel, okay, fine. Mm -hmm. But it's just basically I'm a connector, that's all. Could you tell us more about what an energy force is? The universe is vibrating at the con The universe has a frequency of its own. Mm -hmm. And as the frequency increases, so does the vibration, according to Planck's theory. Mm -hmm. Like, its energy is equal to the Planck's theory constant, like Pl Planck's constant and frequency. Similarly, we have same amount of energy coiled within our body. We have an energy power center which is situated at the, we call it the Muladha Chakra. It's uh, at the end of the spine. We mm -hmm. have, this is our body. We have an auric body exactly like this within us. And in that auric body, at the end of the spine, that position, our energy power center is there. Wow. So it is we have to uncoil the power center we have within us mm -hmm. and there are like we say we have chakras we have seven chakras within our body major chakras there are many more but there are seven major chakras like they are all connected to the different parts of the body different organs and endocrine glands mm -hmm. and they affect the human body how they vibrate because each and every organ vibrates at a certain frequency so within us, we are vibrating at a certain frequency. Every organ is vibrating at a certain frequency and we have the energy. And as the different parts vibrate, they create energy. Mm. Similarly, around us, the energy is there. Like I'm sitting outside here. Mm -hmm. If you sit for a little while, and even suppose I'll tell you, if you're fasting, the day you fast mm -hmm. and you are out in the open, you will see you don't feel hungry because the energy is there. Mm. You don't need food. We eat, we think we are eating food for energy, but the energy is there around us. Wow. The breeze, the sun, the air, we get the energy from there. So they, the day you fast, you are there. So you are connecting your energy and you are connecting with the universal energy field. Okay, so we were talking about chakras earlier, and we have seven of them, right? Yes. Do, does music affect the chakras? Yes, there are seven music notes. Mm -hmm. There are seven chakras. Each music note has a... A frequency which is uh, corresponding to the seven chakras okay like the note do or i will say sa i will mm -hmm. say the indian one sa sa affects the chakra muladhar chakra which is at the root which is the root chakra which is at the end of the end of the spine down there okay then it is called swadhishtan chakra that is the note ray the second do ray mm -hmm. huh? we say sa ray even sa we ray. say ray okay sa ray Ray, it's called Swadhishtan, which is uh, just above the root chakra. Then it is Ga, the third note, which is the navel. Mm -hmm. We have like the chakra is here. Then we have Sare Ga Ma. Ma is the heart chakra. And uh, then the throat chakra and every note as we sing, it vibrates. Like when we sing a note, there is a vibration created. The sound creates a vibration. Mm -hmm. It affects that specific organ or the tissue. Wow. Then what happens, the blood, the muscles contract. Mm -hmm. The nerve muscles and the tissue, there, it contracts. And automatically, the air and blood is forced out of that tissue to the next tissue. Oh. So constantly, if I know, go on singing the note Sa. So the chakra, which is there the, at the base, goes on, that note hits. And the air and the blood is forced out from that mm -hmm. tissue so it moves up and oh. a vacuum is cleared, created and fresh blood and 
um, air comes in. It's like aku pressure, aku puncture, oh, okay. but in music you don't touch the body. Wow! It's exactly like how an aku puncture would work. You vibrate uh, and you the vibration affects that muscle mm -hmm. and the tissue. Blood and air is forced out of it, and new fresh blood and air comes in, and uh, it starts vibrating at a uh, like naturally. Then what happens? The higher energy level, higher energy field in the universe acts. The body is low. Body energy mm -hmm. is low. Then the higher energy level uh, comes inside the body. Or generally, what happens if you're in a gathering? You take the energy from the other person. Mm -hmm. There is you are not in the atmosphere outside. You're in a closed room mm -hmm. with other people. You take the energy from someone else. That's what happens. So, like music is that. So it activates each chakra, and it just it's just like acupressure. Wow. So, what type of um, health ailments do you usually do you usually see or treat with musical therapy? Musical, the music therapy can treat many ailments. The basic ones I I treat are like anxiety, pain, migraine, mm. which is a common thing I think with our ladies. Mm -hmm. Migraine, then uh, depression, insomnia, Alzheimer's, mm. and uh, even cancer. Cancer, I have seen what wonder it can do really and and actually even multiple sclerosis then autistic people oh i had students with down syndrome uh -huh. so i have seen how music has had effect on them and it, it, it's really nice mm -hmm. when you do om at a very low scale like om when we are saying om that we are om. closing the mouth mm -hmm. the air is inside it activates the lowest chakra, it moves up. Okay. And what happens, it moves up totally, comes out of the head. Omkar is very, very powerful, if, especially for spondylosis, special, then for migraine, for stress. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell something for stress, a very simple method. Whoever, like if you're in a big gathering and um, you are really not enjoying the thing and <laughs> you're angry, somebody has made you really and like annoyed you, you can hum. If there's too much of hustle bustle, you can just go to in one corner and like just go on doing. Mm, mm. You are just humming, and with humming, your chakras are all activated. So what is happening around? You are there physically, but you are away from them. You create mm -hmm. a booth. So this is very very important. Somebody is annoying you, and if you can't hum, it, the person is right in front of you. He hum it within. Just hum, go on humming with them. You'll see, you'll just, you're cool. Then whatever the person is feeling cannot make you angry anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm really interested to know about how musical therapy affects cancer patients. Could you explain more about that? I can say what I have done. I can't say anything else. I have seen how terminally ill cancer patients can be relieved of pain. They don't even feel they have pain and they're dying with chanting. And also, I have seen initial stages when they, somebody has cancer can get rid of it, can get cured. Because actually, all, our, all of us are constantly having some cancer cells in our body, constantly. But if we can uh, regulate our vibration within the body, we can stop that cancer cell from mm -hmm. gro growing. Wow. That is very important. And definitely, uh, terminally ill cancer patients can get much relief if they listen to the chantings. Because chantings are generally at a certain note. So it goes on saying those certain words and especially our Sanskrit chantings. It was done 2,500 years ago by sages which had meanings. It says something. And those, all these chantings are very, very potent because when the sages, they had so much of that power, they made those, uh, these um, chantings very potent because what are, whatever the words are, they can, they actually exp really have the, the meaning, whatever the meaning of the chanting is, it uh, heals you of that. Like chantings are there for the day, for night, for different sicknesses, for prosperity. You go on chanting that and you get the effect. And for terminally ill cancer patient, if you put the chanting like Maha Mantra or uh, for Ganesh we say for relief and uh, all well-being, you go on chanting, you know, the person, cancer patient generally will die. What cancer patient? We all will die. 
So that's not the thing. We have just, uh, we need a reason to die. That's the thing. <laughs> but cancer patient, when they are just drifting away, they won't feel the pain when they're listening to the chanting. Constantly the chanting goes on okay. and it soothes them. It puts them in little sleep. Like they're in a constant sleep like that. They don't feel the pain. It is very, very, it's a relief to see because generally you can't see a, Terminally ill cancer patient. It's, it's very difficult to watch a cancer patient at that stage. It's very painful. You moved to East Africa. Yeah. How do you think that affected uh, your perspective on the world? It affected a lot. When I went to Kenya, first I went to Kenya. I've been to other countries also, but uh, we were in Kenya for 12 years. When I first went and I wanted to start my music school, I saw the parents teachers, I mean uh, students, I mean par elders or uh, youngsters, they were not even interested in learning Indian music. They didn't even know what Indian music was. Then I thought if I taught them very difficult ragas, they will not be interested. So I had to be innovative. So I started making simple songs with simple rhythms. Then gradually I introduced them to the diff like different rhythms. Then they could recognize rag. But I made them very simple. Then being in Kenya for so many years, I taught them Kiswahili songs also. Then I taught them songs from different languages of India, then folk songs, different rhythms they knew. They could even recognize, uh, like not, uh, we say notation, reading, writing. They, if you sing a song, they would say which notes are there. They could recognize that. But what happened uh, in Nairobi, I sang songs like I'm a Hindu. So I sing songs for my Hindu God. And we in India, we say uh, 36 crore, millions of gods we have. We have so many gods. So I sing <laughs> songs of so many gods. I was educated in a convent school by nuns. So I sing Christian hymns. I sing for Muslims. I have sung for them. Hamd and Nath, they call. I have done Buddhist chanting. I have done Shabbat for the Sikh community. So for me, I have seen that world is just like a big family and made me appreciate what others are, like it. And we can, it's just like all brother sisters. We're mm -hmm. a huge family. In, a, in your family, if you have many relatives or many brother sisters, nobody is the same. Mm -hmm. So world, I feel it's just a big, huge family. Everybody is different, thinking is different, look different. They, like things differently, they talk <laughs> differently, but they are the same. It's just the same. It made me more accept, like more, uh, I won't say tolerant, more accepting, more sharing, more loving. It's very easy for me to go up to somebody and say, hello, how are you? I'm very comfortable mm -hmm. because I feel we are all the same. What's the difference? The color, the... Um, nature we talk or the culture it's nice to have different cultures we can get so much by sharing we get more by sharing we can learn so much more it's so uh, I have learned so much staying in East Africa I had been to in I've stayed in Nairobi in Dar es Salaam in Kinshasa now I'm in Addis Ababa wow and uh, I travel to various parts of the world and it's so nice it's a big huge family do you, um, do you teach your students musical therapy? Do you pass yeah. that on? Initially, because I think Indian music, they don't say music therapy, they teach you like that. You know, like we start with the note sa. We have to practice sa. That means we are initially starting uh, activating the uh, muladha chakra or the root chakra. That means you are already, your body is already functioning at a constant proper level. So we do that melodic phrases practice. And then we do Omkar. I used to do Omkar. Mm -hmm. I say that when we do Sa Gama Padhani, we practice. Then we did Omkar in those notes. So those, they have to practice. Okay. It's, it's not as a therapy, it's just part of my teaching. They all have to know it. And my children, like uh, my daughter, my son, I have a son and a daughter. They have grown up with music and I think they are very balanced children. Mm -hmm. In spite of this, uh, what the, or whatever the situation is now, they are doing all right. They have grown with Indian, like Indian music really helps you to be rooted. See, Sa is the root chakra. It keeps you rooted. Your, <laughs> your feet is firmly on the ground. Whatever happens, 
You don't lose your way. It is very important. Thank you for sharing that with us.